Thanks. That was that was great. I was wondering if you saw, with re with regards to the peristalsis, if you saw any kind of transcriptional signature associated with activation of any immune genes or any of the mononuclear cells along along the the gut, and whether that's that's somehow, you know, the 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 fish in this case is is actually seeing the vibrio and making a response, or is there something even more uh, in depth metabolic or something else going on there? Yeah, that's a great question. So in the um, rat fish, we haven't looked at this as extensively. We actually have another um, peristalsis mutant that we've been looking at, um, a SOX10 mutant. And in those fish, they actually develop uh, a, a, an inflammatory response to the gut microbiota that assembles. And, um, and we've shown that that community is more pro-inflammatory, so we can transmit the inflammation of a SOX10 um, microbiota to wild type fish, and, and we also see enhanced uh, inflammation. So, but um, in terms of the, the actual transcriptional responses, to we haven't done as much looking at these simple systems with with Vibri. We have a, a little bit of data showing that if we just mono associate the SOX10 animals with that that Vibrio, it will also elicit more of a, um, a neutrophil influx response, and there's there's elevated TNF um, and interleukin one beta expression. So, so also, do, do zebrafish make antibody responses, IgD and IgM? And I, I have to admit, I make, yes. they have IgZ. Do they make those against these organisms? That's a great question. And so they, they, um, we have not looked at that. And, and um, this is one of the reasons we really want to get older germ-free fish, is that uh, the fish only um, mature their adaptive immune response at about four weeks of age. So all of that we're looking at right now is really just looking at innate immune responses. Um, but we're very interested in what those adaptive immune responses look like under normal conditions and also when we manipulate the, the microbial constituents. So, have you had a chance to look at these microbes? Yeah. The, the bacteria, if you mute, can you just look at that? Well, yeah. yeah. So, the, so the, the question is the whether um, the, the, the mutant um, bacteria that lack this BEFA, um, are they less fit? And um, the question is that when grown in vitro, they have a similar fitness, the wild type. When we mono-associate germ-free fish, to a first approximation, they grow to the same level. But when we compete the mutant against the wild type bacteria, there's, there's a, a subtle colon but reproducible colonization defect. And so you know, what that means, uh, so at this point, we don't know whether Befe um, is acting to confer some, some benefit to the a bacteria that's independent of the host, the, the impact on, on host beta cell uh, number. Um, so that, I mean, that still remains to be seen. Are there, other, are, there, are there other questions? I finally figured out there's a mic over here. <laughs> but that was only because Vince told me that it is. So. Uh, are there other questions for Karen? Yeah. I can repeat it. Oh, OK. Lita's going to bring a microphone over. It's not on. Hello? Uh, okay, yeah. Very good. So uh, those, those of us who are uh, concerned about the health profile of zebrafish colonies, have you entertained studies of your germ-free just with mono-associated with mycobacterium marinum? Because that's the big bugaboo in all of these yeah. these colonies. So it'd be interesting in terms of your insights on that. Yeah, we we've talked with Lalita Ramakrishnan about those experiments. We haven't actually done them, but one thing that um, is interesting. I mean, we actually we've done um, profiling of the the microbiota across development and looked also at aged fish. And in in those fish, we actually see kind of a bloom of mycobacterium species, not just marinum, but um, some of the others. So yeah, and that gives us also a hint of what some of the natural pathogens might be, I think. That, but um, yeah, I think there, there's a lot of potential for doing um, pathogenesis studies. Are there other questions? All right, let's thank Karen for a great talk.